Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make two different shapes, um, both very closely related, a dome and a sphere. Um, I'm starting off with clay that is what I refer to as suede hard. So it's um, it's set up a little bit. Um, and when I set it up right, it doesn't collapse. It's flexible, sort of like suede. Um, and when I bend it, it doesn't crack. And so it's important, um, which I've already done with this, but just to remind you, it is important to compress your clay particles so that your clay is nice and strong and that it is less likely to crack. Um, I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of extra material up here. Uh, and again, I'm gonna save this so I don't have to reclaim it. And so you want to compress your clay particles so that your clay is nice and strong. And then also if you have any air bubbles, you'll see them when you compress your clay. So I'm going to turn it back upright and I'm going to get rid of some extra material here. So as usual, you always score and slip. Um, where the slabs meet, and you want to score in two different directions. And you can slip both sides, or you can use enough slip, just load up the slip on one side so that your slip squeezes through. It's really what you're looking for. And then you're going to add your welding coil but I am going to get rid of some more extra material here. So again, you always score whenever you join slabs together. You score and slip both sides and add a welding coil to both sides. And when you score, you score two different directions. And then I'll use a thicker welding coil on the inside. I tend to like to uh, flatten my coils out so they span the two gap, the two slabs, really blending them together. And then I usually use a smaller welding coil on the outside. Again, I like to flatten them out so it bridges the two slabs. And I just use a thinner coil on the outside because I'm going to end up scraping away a large part of that coil. And so that's why it's really important at this point to score deeply because a lot of this coil will eventually get scraped away. Right now I'm just compressing that coil into the soft slab. So I'm not really scraping away. Um, I'm really compressing, but eventually a lot of that coil will get scraped away, which is why it's important that you have a nice score job because the part that's going to stay together is going to go in those coil in those score lines and it's going to help hold it together. And again, the coil on the inside is a little bit thicker because nobody's going to see the inside and that's really going to help hold it together. Okay, so if I wanted a dome, I could uh, skip this next part that I'm going to show you and I could just put a rounded top on there. Um, but because I'm going to show you more of a sphere, because it's a little bit more complicated, I like to use compasses a lot for all sorts of things, not just to make circles. This is a really nice compass. It's gigantic. You can make it lots of different sizes. But the, the next thing I want to do is, because I want to make a sphere, I'm going to stretch this out. So I'm just using my soft rib. And I'm stretching out the middle portion. And it's kind of ripped on me there, so I'll score and slip and put that back together. And 
And then I'm going to take a minute and dart some shapes out to make it a little bit more rounded. This may be a little too much. And because it's kind of puckery, it's kind of puckering there, I'm going to take out a little bit more clay, actually, to soften that a little. Okay, that's a pretty good start. And then, again, as usual, everything, every slab that gets joined together needs to be scored and slipped. And a welding coil, both sides. And then, again, score and slip inside and out and add another welding coil. So obviously if I wanted a dome, I wouldn't have rounded this part. I could have just left a straight up cylinder and put a round cap over the top of it. Now I'm going to blend in my coil and really compact that clay. And since I can't get my serrated rib on the inside to blend, I'm just using my wood modeling tool to blend those coils. So most of the time I do not use my serrated rib as a scoring tool. It doesn't make a very good scoring tool. I mostly use it as a blending tool because it really grabs a hold of the clay and you can really move it around in a nice controlled manner. So it is my preferred blending tool. So now I can even shape it a little bit more. I can use my fingers or my soft rib to really help round it out. Okay, so that's a pretty decent start for a spear. So the next thing I want to do is cut out a piece of clay. And I'm just using this to kind of measure it. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Actually, that's quite a bit bigger. So I definitely want to compress my clay particle skin because I didn't compress that slab. I'm going to take a minute and do that. And so now I'm going to slump it in and I'm going to let gravity do a lot of my work for me by slumping in the slab. So this slab of clay is super duper wet. If I were to try to stand it on end, there's just no way. It's super wet. It's very floppy. Um, so right now I'm using suede hard clay, which is firmed up a little bit, and this slab of clay that just came fresh off the slab roller. So it is really wet and really malleable. So I'm working with two different consistencies of clay at this point. And that seems pretty good. So I'm just gonna cut off some excess. I'm gonna still leave it a little bit bigger because this wet clay needs to shrink just a little bit um, because once it gets to the same consistency as this weighed hard clay at the bottom, it'll shrink just a little bit. But eventually what I'll do is once this sets up to be suede hard, I'll flip it around and turn it like that. And I've got the top part of a spear. But I'm going to let that set up and then I'll come back to this. <laughs> 